Cherry Factory. We have 31 companies from around the country performing over a three-week period in this very building. Uh, among my favorite of these 31 companies, and I know I'm not supposed to take my favorites, but you're here to see Hand Mouth for their second run at the Fury Factory. So good to have them back down to Fort York. So, um, the state of California would like you to know that there are exits here. <laughs> there are exits here. If you'd like to take out your cell phones, turn them on, they're off of them. Send a text to a friend saying, I am at this amazing theater festival. There's another week of it with many more performances, and you should come and join me and make a date with them now. While you're doing that, just a few more thoughts. We are, to our knowledge, the only festival of this sort in the country. We have uh, ensembles from all over. We have a strong focus on works in progress. Uh, as we feel there's a, a real lack of opportunity for companies that are making work as ensembles to show their work in process. Uh, and so that's, that's invaluable. You can come back all week and see things that are still in the state of creation. And you can also see some main stage productions, such as the one you're about to see. Uh, later tonight, if you'd like to speak with the artists or speak with your friends over drinks, we will be meeting at the right spot at 17th and Folsom. I feel there must be other things. We have, we have surveys. We will find a new program. A thin, a yet rather long piece of white paper with a demographic survey on it. And as these festivals are extraordinarily expensive to put on, and much of our funding comes from, in this, this year at least, from the City of San Francisco and the National Endowment for the Arts, these surveys are what allow them to feel good about giving us money. So uh, if you have extra money, please drop it in the jar outside. Or consider buying an Andy Dandy Festival t-shirt. Or mailing it a check. Or mailing it a check. <laughs> or giving one to Janice, our board member here. And I'd also like us all to take a moment to turn around and say hello to our internet audience. It's live streaming across the world. <laughs> this is one of the first festivals to attempt to have a real live presence on the web, live streaming. We're a theater company that is dedicated to making work that you can only experience live. And yet, we are streaming on the web, so it's sort of an experiment of experiments. So, there it is. The show will be starting shortly. Workshops. Ah, workshops. We have many workshops. Brilliant <laughs> artists who are performing in the festival, one of which still has spots available, which is with Inkboat and Shimichi Yorakoga next week, next Sunday. And if you've never worked with Shinichi, if you're a mover or interested in being a mover, I strongly recommend you come check it out. And the show will be starting shortly. Thank you for being here. those naked pictures of you and dad to school in the fifth grade. I thought it would make me popular, and it did. <laughs> you never knew this, but I used to replace your birth control pills with aspirin. That one time in high school when I threw that party and you busted me and I said, fuck you, you don't live here anymore, I still feel really bad. I 
when you say that I ruin everything because you know I don't try to. I don't think anyone will ever live up to your expectations. After you die, I'm going to ask for your t-shirts and your boots and I will wear them. I've never told you this before, but sitting with you on the couch, even though it is completely covered in cat hair, is one of my favorite things. <laughs> you make it really easy to be the good child. <laughs> try it on and then you just stare. Mom, you just got some terrible news. Our neighbor has cancer. Oh boy. Sarah's pregnant. Oh boy. He cheated on me. Oh boy. Mom, can I borrow money again? Oh boy. Mom, it is Thanksgiving and I accidentally just made fun of the turkey that you spent all day on and I say that the gravy is a little cold and you pretend it doesn't bother you and then you start to cry. Dad, dad. It's 105 degrees outside, and we're driving down to Santa Cruz. I forgot to put cool it in the car like you asked me to, so the car stalls and we're all standing on the highway. Son of a bitch! Cocksucker motherfucker goddamn son of a bitch hole! Will you throw the biggest tantrum I have ever heard? I've fallen off my bike, and I'm pretty sure I've broken my arm. You make me move it around, which only makes it hurt worse. You tell me it can't possibly be broken, and I should just walk it off. Finally, you take me to the hospital, and it turns out it's broken in three places. You keep asking me about my love life. You want to know all about who I'm seeing, what my type is, how he treats me. So I finally break down, and I tell you all about my current lovers. What? What? Uh, yeah, you don't need to know about that. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen you since the divorce. You invite me over for lunch. You tell me about the sandwiches that you made and the cold cokes in the fridge. But when I arrive, you point to a pile of rotting wood and torn up carpet in the driveway and tell me to load my truck and take it to the dump. We are at the beach with mom and dad, and my brother is adjusting his shorts like he's on the football field. And you don't think anyone's watching you, so you just keep pulling and tugging at yourself. You called to let me know that your son was born, and you are so happy and so exhausted. So we both just sit, each holding our end of the telephone, and cry. You have really upset mom, and dad looks like he's about to explode, and even I can't believe the words that are coming out of your mouth. You're storming out of the house and saying that you're never coming back, and then we don't see you or hear from you for five years. You're getting married. I'm watching Dad walk you down the aisle, and the two of you look happier than I've ever seen you. In three months, you'll cheat on your husband and break up the marriage just like Dad did. I am really drunk, and I'm hitting on all of your friends, and you are looking at me like you want to kill me. You're in the upstairs bathroom, blow drying your hair, and you are taking forever and the entire family is waiting for you at the kitchen table and you will not come out of the bathroom. What happened? I'm home for Christmas. And so is my sister. And it's early in the morning so the sky is still dark. And there's a snowstorm that day, so these big flakes of snow are falling down to the ground. And the Christmas tree is lit, so this really soft and magical light is coming in from the living room. And the house smells like turkey and mashed potatoes and coffee. Who is there? Mom is there. Where is she? She's in the kitchen getting a box of cookies together to send with Dad. You're feeling pretty torn up on the inside and trying to make polite conversation. Who else was there? My sister is there. Where is she? She's in the upstairs bathroom, blow drying her hair. And you and Dad have a history of tension, so you're starting to feel a little bit nervous. 
Where is he? He's sitting awkwardly at the kitchen table. This is the house where you spent 25 years of marriage, but now you don't live here anymore. So you always feel a little out of place and a little melancholy. Who else was there? And I'm there, and I'm sitting at the kitchen table, waiting for my sister. This is the day Dad came to pick me and my sister up to take us out to eat.
over. She's always coming up behind me and saying, shoulders back. I get scoliosis from dad. <laughs> Jerry's lucky he didn't get it. I get my nipple hair from dad. Neither one of us really have hair anywhere else on our chest. <laughs> Just right here. At really least lucky she didn't get that. <laughs> but Faith did. <laughs> Before, but I think it's really pathetic that the only way you get any attention in this family is by making fun of people. <laughs> Do you remember last November when you wanted to visit me on Thanksgiving and I told you you couldn't and I hurt your feelings? Well, it, it was because I just had an abortion.
playing a video game like I do every Friday night. I'm playing Contra and I'm so far into the game, I think I might actually beat it this time. All of a sudden, the television goes off. I can't believe this is happening. I was on the last level. I was almost done. And then I hear someone behind me. Who was there? Dad was there. And you are looking really pale and really nervous and gripping the remote control tightly. Who else was there? Mom was there. And you're hovering near the edge of the couch, holding this book, The Joy of Sex. Dad asks if I have any questions about being a man. Do you know what self-abuse is, <laughs> Jerry? We think it's time we had a little talk, honey. <laughs> Mom opens to a diagram of the human reproductive organs. Mother and I just want to talk to you about some of the beautiful and magical changes that are happening inside your little body. There's a lot of magic going on inside, sweetheart, and your father and I just want to talk to you a little bit about it. Okay? Don't be nervous. No! Oh, God, don't be nervous. It's just me and your mother. Just us, just us, honey. <laughs> now, well, I think we should just go ahead go and ahead. start. Um, I want you to look at this. This is what your penis looks like when it is aroused and erect. It's much bigger. Oh, much firmer. Yes, it is big and firm. <laughs> it, it gets big and firm. And, and when a man loves a woman, he can stick his erect, big, firm penis inside her vagina. The wife's vagina. The vagina belonging to right. the wife. This <laughs> man and the woman are, of course, right married. Right. right, right. But, uh, oh, before that, you might feel the urge to rub that penis of yours, and it might grow and grow and grow into a beautiful statue. You're not going to touch that statue. No, I'm just going to get up out of your bed. You're going to take a nice Long walk yes. until it gets soft again. Oh, you're just gonna walk it soft, honey. Just walk that <laughs> stuff soft. <laughs> and now, now listen, there's also gonna might be a time when you might be sleeping and then you wake up and there's all this uh, wetness around you and it's like, it's marshmallowy and it's salty. And you know what? That stuff, that stuff is called semen. You're just gonna get up out of your bed, you're gonna take off your underpants. Yes. You're gonna take off your sheet right. and you're gonna tiptoe them down to the washing machine. Dip, 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 and you're not gonna dip, tell dip, me, dip. and you're not gonna tell your mother. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus Christ, I mean, do not tell me, okay? <laughs> no, no, but oh, oh, honey, no, 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 this is good news. This is good news because, because. So one of these days, you're just going to love using that penis of yours. You're going to use it all over the place. Your father, he uses his all over it. So everywhere. I mean, it's me hard. I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack. <laughs> hey, are you hungry? Oh my god, I'm starving. I need to, I need to help out some hot dogs, Eddie. Oh gosh, that sounds oh, good. Maybe we'll have a little corn on the cob oh, with some beans. Salt. Oh, yeah, that's butter. Butter on that corn. I will, oh. I'll toss a salad. Oh, oh god, that sounds delicious. Oh, I think that sounds good. Woodchucks eat them. Dad is furious. And he comes into the house, he's yelling and screaming, 
and mom tells him to calm down, but he won't calm down. And then he grabs her and he throws her up against the pantry door and he starts to choke her. Faith and I are in the living room watching and when he sees us, he stops. An hour later, we all put on our Sunday best and we go to a party at the neighbor's house. Dad is such a passionate photographer. Every year at Christmas, he makes Liz and I go outside in the cold to the backyard. He always picks the snowiest part of the yard and he always takes two pictures in case one of us blinks. Liz complains a lot and we both pretend to hate it, but it's the most attention we get all year and the one time he forgot, Liz went and dragged out his camera and made him take the pictures. And now there's a wall of photos in the house from every single year. Dad and I are at Amazon Park. He's just put me on my new bike, which is really Jerry's old bike, and I'm so scared. I'm so scared I don't want to go. And I say, Dad, promise me you won't let go. And he promises he won't let go, and all of a sudden I'm pedaling and I'm pedaling. And I'm so scared, I'm too scared to look back, but when I finally do, he's got the same look on his face as when he tells dirty jokes at the dinner table. I just started kindergarten, and I hate my teacher. She makes me cry all the time. One day when I won't stop crying, she calls home to talk to mom. But she gets dad instead. You come to pick me up, you bring me home, you make me grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup, you talk to me like I'm a grown-up, like I'm your friend. And when mom comes home, you flat out tell her, I will not be going back to that school. I'm going to go to Harris Elementary, where Julie goes. And the next morning, you take me to Mrs. Stoker's room, and I love her from the moment I see her. And I love school from then on out. When I call home, I usually hope that you won't answer. It's just easier to leave a message. Sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night and think about you dying, I have to turn on the radio. Please don't take your shirt off in public. You don't look like Brad Pitt. It just makes everyone uncomfortable. What? Oh, ah. <laughs> you know all those stories that you tell about your early life to make it seem more interesting? We know they're made up. Whenever I meet anyone who's manipulative and passive aggressive, I immediately think of you. <laughs> I am really glad that you have a girlfriend, because even after all of these years, you still really need someone to take care of you. When we're older and full of cancer, it doesn't matter now, come on, get happy, cause nothing lasts forever, and I will always love you. Don't forget me, please don't forget.
played his boobs. What is dad afraid of? Losing his mind. What is one thing that he always says? Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. What makes dad nasty? His temper. What else? His five o'clock shadow. What is his favorite curse word? Shit. Fuck. Shit. Son of a bitch. Shit. Damn it. Did mom suspect that dad was cheating? No. Huh? What? Yes. What makes dad laugh? His own jokes. How does dad laugh? He goes, Who do you go to for advice? Dad. What does mom say that embarrasses you? You look great, honey. Did you lose some weight? How do you describe the family to other people? Quiet. What's one bad habit you got from mom? Smoking and drinking. Who's mom's <laughs> favorite singer? Willie Nelson. Cat Stevens. Bob Dylan. Jake Stewart. How does mom fart? Silently. But deadly. <laughs> What's mom's <laughs> best personality trait? She makes everyone feel special. What's one thing you wish mom said to you more often? Fuck it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I went out on a great date last night. Do you want more money? What do you do when you get upset? I wave my hands in front of my face like this and I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack. I mean, I just get really flustered. I can't get my words out. I don't really get upset. <laughs> What does Jerry do when he gets upset? He buries it deep inside. Until he explodes like a little man diva. <laughs> what does Jerry do that makes you laugh? Stupid shit. Whoa! Oh, oh. <laughs> Why do you lie to your friends about the family? I don't. Because you embarrass me. Who is the favorite of the family? Who's the loser of the family? No, it's just me. Who is it? It's Julie. It's Jerry! <laughs> when is the last time you saw Dad cry? When Grandpa died. When Jerry burned the house down. Why do you smell like B.O. all the time? Because the order gives me rashes. Why does Julie always have to win? Because she needs to be in control all the time. She never wins. She's the loser. What could you say right now that would make Mom cry? The reason why you had to declare bankruptcy is because you spent your money on things that you don't need. What else? I'm not coming home for Hanukkah. What could you say right now that would make me cry? It doesn't really shake much faith. Especially when you're on your moon cycle. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's the most annoying person in the family? Jerry. Who's the most gullible? Liz. Who, why is mom so nasty? Well, she gave birth to you, Mom's Jake. not nasty. What's the grossest thing that dad ever did? He took a shit on mom's oh, desk. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> who has the most pubic hair? Liz does. Who <laughs> has the most scrumptious nipples? I do. <laughs> so I'll take it from me, hunt. I mean... <laughs> if you had to take a gander, who would you... <laughs> who got held back in the fifth grade? I did. Who peed her pants on the school bus? 
Who gets sent home from swim class for poor hygiene? That was face. <laughs> who should never ever have second son chili? <laughs> who is the most ticklish? No. <laughs> Where else? Where else? Where else? Where else? happen to me all the time. Okay. Just really lucky. No, I'm joking. You know what, Mom? Dad used to take me out to lunch all the time, just me and Dad. And, um, you know, he would sit me down and he would say, Babe, you're going to do something big someday. Something really big. In your shorts. <laughs> okay, I'm also Grandpa's favorite. I write thank you notes. No! You know what? My, uh, my mom's favorite. My mom's the number, number one favorite because I. Um, she said this to me once. This is a direct quote. She said, "Babe, you are. You have like a special light that nobody else has. You're like a shining beacon to everyone around you because because you are are going to save this, this family and you're going to save." Humanity, because you're so With your incredible methane gas production, babe, you will no, solve the climate are, crisis and you will send us all to Uranus on your fuel. through your senior year of high school. I was such a bitch to you. I yelled at you in front of all of your friends and I made them all go home. You were so cool about it. You just sat watching TV with me all night and you, you never said a word about it. Well, I never told you this before, but I'm sorry. I am really going to love it when I sit down next to you and you pat me on the head. time I saw you upset. I was 12. It was September. The leaves on the trees were just starting to fall. School was about to start and they already had my bag packed with all my school supplies. I was just getting home from basketball practice when dad called us into the bedroom for a family meeting. Who was there? My brother is there, Jerry. You're sitting on the floor, you've got your face pushed into a pillow, you're crying. Who else was there? Dad is there. You're standing in the foot of the bed. You are furious. There's a vein in your neck that looks like it's going to explode. Who else was there? I'm there. Julie, you're me. 
you're weak. You're standing in the corner. You're feeling terrified. You're having trouble breathing. And mom is there. You are feeling humiliated. You know you've done something wrong. You've brought something into this house and you can't take it back. This is the day that mom came home with her brand new perm.
be right there. Hi, sweetie. Oh, Mom. Mom, can we say a prayer? Of course we can. Are you going to help? Why don't you start? Okay. Um, God bless me and you and Dad and everyone I've ever loved and bless Jerry and Julie and Faith and Aaron and Obama. Anyone else? Nope. That's really sweet, honey. Mom, can I have a bedtime story? Of course I can. Today, in the course of sorting and packing, I came across this photo of your father and I, and I had to stop my work and have a hell of a cry. I couldn't help but reflect on the sad conclusion of what has been in many ways a successful, achieving marriage. You kids are the best evidence of that. It is quite a wonder how these things reveal themselves while sifting through old memories captured on film. There are no secrets here. Mom, can you check under the bed to see if there are any mice there? There are no mice, sweetie. Do you promise? Not a single whisker. You kids are the greatest thing to come out of our marriage. And for that, I will never put it down. Despite the incredible hurt that your mother caused. This is not the midlife change I've been expecting. It's not what I deserve. But I hope my bitterness fades someday. Maybe then we can talk about it. Mom, why do you always have to play the victim? That's enough for tonight, sweetheart. Mom, can you check out the window to see if E.T. is out the window? <laughs> E.T. is not outside the window. Can I have a kiss? Of course. Good night, Mom. Good night, sweetie. stays up waiting for me, no matter how late it is. And I sneak in through the back door, and I tiptoe across the kitchen. And then I hear her sleepy voice calling out to me from her bedroom. Honey, can you come in here? I just want to see that you're okay. As the years went by, I would go in before she even had a chance to call and stand in the doorway and talk to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom liked to help with my schoolwork mm -hmm. a lot. One time I got home really late from rehearsal. I was exhausted, but I had a huge project due the next day. Mom told me to go right to bed. Mm -hmm. And then she stayed up all night building an Eiffel Tower out of popsicle sticks. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful and complex and perfect. 
and there was no way that anyone would ever believe it was made by a third grader. <laughs> One time, I got into trouble for stealing champagne from our church. And I don't know how she found out. I didn't call her, but she came down, and she talked to the officer, and talked to the pastor, and somehow got me out of it. But she wasn't even that mad. And even though it was 3 o'clock in the morning, we stopped for tacos on the way home, and she told me about all of the juvenile and asinine things that she had done when she was in high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mom used to lie to me all the time about Dad. Oh, boy. She told me he was a cocaine addict and a homosexual. Oh, here we go. She said that he didn't want us to have a house or any money. Oh, boy. She said that he made her stop breastfeeding me after two weeks so they could go on vacation to Mexico. Oh boy. She said that he didn't even really want to have children. And mom, mom loves to sing. One time in high school I was hanging out with some friends and mom started to sing this James Taylor song oh boy. at the top of her lungs. I yelled at her to shut up. And then I ran out of the room because I was so embarrassed. A few years later, after I moved away from home, I realized that I could sing too. And it was something I loved to do so much. And now I want to tell mom how beautiful her voice is. But I can never compliment her. I can never say anything nice to her without her somehow turning it into a compliment about me. You used to cry all the time when you were younger to get attention. It must have worked because you still do it. Oh. I never told you this, but we 
when you and Dad got a divorce and I went to go live with him instead of you and I told you it was just because it was more convenient? Really, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to take care of me. You would say the most inappropriate things. It didn't matter whose feelings you hurt. And you could never take any kind of criticism. If you felt even slightly attacked, you would throw yourself a pity party. You were always in your own little world. We used to call you Helen Keller. You were always really immature. And you should probably lay off those cookies. You've been looking a little chunky lately. You hated being cheesed. You would get so sensitive about it. It was actually pretty sweet. And you were always scared, especially at night. But music always helped to calm you down. You were so serious. <gasps>
always one person in the group who ruins it for everybody else. <laughs> that question, Jerry? Why there's always one person who ruins it for the group? <laughs> Why does Jerry ruin it for all of us? Why does Jerry ruin it for all of us? Because he's a total narcissist. Yeah. Why does Jerry ruin it for all of us? I don't know, Dave. When's the last time he ruined it? Two minutes ago! When he decided to sleep with my best friend. That ended well. How about this morning when he left pubes on the new soap? What makes you laugh? New Yorker cartoons. Dirty jokes. Ah! How does Dad tell jokes? Well, he starts in the middle, then he gets sort of confused, so he goes back to the beginning, and he cracks himself up, and he goes to the bomb. Ah! What's one thing Mom always says? We love each other very much. Oh boy, here we go. How do Mom and Dad kiss? But they don't really get very gently on the they lips. They kiss passionately. They don't kiss anymore. What does Mom cook on Christmas? She gets a pie from the store. She cooks turkey. She microwaves some bullshit. She's a terrible cook. What does Liz do when she gets embarrassed? She puts her hands in front of her face. She whoops. She barks. What's your biggest regret? That I moved so far away from my family. That I didn't go to Grandma's funeral. That I joined this goddamn theater company. <laughs> Is Dad strong? Yes, yes, very, very strong. Are you strong? What? what? Huh? Why huh? doesn't anyone listen? What? What? Why doesn't anyone listen? Huh? What? Why doesn't anyone listen? Why doesn't anyone listen? Why doesn't anyone listen? Huh? Huh? What's your biggest regret? That my marriage fell apart. Oh, boy. Is mom strong? It's a nightmare for dad. That I have a patient at the hospital and he's bleeding to death, and there's a crazy thunderstorm, and there's a giant squid, and I shit my pants and I got my period. Why did you walk out on the family? <laughs> Couldn't take it anymore. When is my birthday? Say Patrick's Day? It's July 22nd. July 22nd. Describe mom's nipples. No. They're beautiful. No. Those are pink half dollars. Delicious. Don't. 
you just got home from the bar. You're hitting on all of Julie's friends. It's the grossest thing that any of us have ever seen. We're at the airport. We're trying to check in and you can't put our reservation and you are furious. And Nate tells you to calm down, but you won't calm down. And Jerry tells you to calm down, but you won't calm down. You will not shut up. We're getting ready to go out to dinner and mom comes out of the bedroom and you say, is that what you're going to wear? Are you wearing that? Is that what you're going to wear? Is that what you're wearing?
her kibbutz and even when she was 85 years old and she didn't know who she was anymore, she still had these perky boobs. <laughs> and I get my legs from Grandma too. She had these very strong, sturdy, stocky legs, especially the calves. to be embarrassed by her calves, so she would wear high heels. Her closet was lined with hundreds and hundreds of pairs of heels. She said it made her legs look thinner. Bye. Uh -huh.